Hello, everybody, and welcome to this completely mature and serious episode of... Yeah. So, today I have an extremely important and deep question that everyone living in this society has been wondering for decades, perhaps centuries. Now, you know how pirates say arg? Well, what do they mean when they're saying arg? Hmm? You ever wondered that? This has been a mystery that has been eluding humanity for hundreds of years since the since the whole what, what, what was that thing like the Spanish Armada big old battle where all the pirates formed you know pirates the Caribbean yar har har when they're saying arg and they're yo ho ho's etc no no it is not just some kind of happy go lucky plundering jargon no no this is much more this is an entire language. I had to go deep into the recesses of the universe, and I had to pull and extrapolate upon the wisdom of the gods to come up and find the great truth, the great truth of the world, and that is the language of the pirates. That's right. I found out the truth, and the truth is dark. The truth is disturbing. You might want to buckle yourselves in because this is most likely going to give you nightmares afterwards. But I have created, or what my genius has summoned from the, from the depths of, of the underworld, is Hyperpilot. So when you see Jack Sparrow, gallivanting around, yarring his hars and swashing his buckles. You may not think about it, but he is a native speaker of one of the most complicated languages ever to be composed. This language, Hyperpirate, or Yahahaha, is a divine masterpiece, created by myself and my Discord admin, Eternal. As with all good things, we spent countless hours maniacally laughing at how absolutely disturbing this creation is and you're you're about to see why so what is hyper pirate and, and more importantly why is hyper pirate the first step to any good solid con lang showcase is the phonology <laughs> so so what's the phonology of hyper pirate you may recall that pirates like to say arg Now, now, pardon me for mispronouncing these things, because I am not a native speaker of Hyper Pirate. <sighs> its consonants are G, G, R, H, R, R, H. Oh God, H, R, R, Y, T, R, A, R. <laughs> oh god, I can barely like distinguish the voice versus voiceless in this, but just go with it. Just go with it. Just believe in me. Hyper Pirates vowels are a r a r a r a r a r r and there are short and long versions of each vowel, basically, including the syllabic consonants. The phonotactics are, you know, relatively simple for the most part. C, C, V, C, C. C2 can be any consonant other than G, and H is often elided in speech, as such naturalistic, incredible languages as these would. Fortition is an element of the phonotactics in this language. Sounds at the beginning of reduplicated syllables, and yes, there are <laughs> there's many opportunities for reduplicated syllables, as we'll get into later, that precede the stem are devoiced, and vice versa. Unless the root itself is already subject <laughs> to fortition. A word that ends in a voiceless sound, and g counts as voiceless, it has k as an allophone, devoices the consonants at the beginning of the next word. So, how does it sound? Th this sentence, visible on the screen, means not all five fish breathe gasoline? 
and it's a question because that matters again we'll get into that later so how do you say this now i asked members of my discord server to uh to give their most entertaining attempts at pronouncing these things and uh and the results are pretty good <laughs> I'm gonna try this bullshit here I, I, can't, I can't do voiceless. Okay, I'll try anyway. No, I'm not trying to speak Icelandic. I'm trying to speak Hyper Pirate. I trust you. <laughs> Russian Hyper dog. Hyper Pirate? Yeah. Hyper okay. Pirate. What? No. no, wait, it's voiceless. <laughs> Cardi. Oh, my God. Mr. Chris, how dare you not lie? I haven't even gone past the first yeah. word, and you're scared? Okay, yeah. I quit. The trill fricative combination. It's freaking with my mind. So here's my best shot at how this sentence sounds. So not all five fish breathe gasoline. You mean Oh god. Yeah. So as you can see, totally easy, totally realistic. But plot twist. That's not actually the sentence, not all five fish breathe gasoline. This is. <laughs> That's actually the sentence, not all five fish breathe gasoline. That's right, from the time I sent out that request for people to try and pronounce that sentence to the time of making this video, Eternal and I changed a lot of things. It, it, Eternal really decided that we needed to make this absolutely the most difficult thing humanly imaginable. So, uh, here it is. <laughs> yes, and the, the, those first two lines are the orthography, the romanization. All the questions that you have, the answer is most likely yes. We're gonna get into it. So first of all, here's the romanization. We had to put it in quotation marks because a lot of the letters aren't even actually parts of the Latin alphabet. Voiceless consonants and rhotic vowels are typically indicated by an acute. Then we have the syllabic consonants are marked as such by a preceding apostrophe. Long syllabic consonants are indicated by a preceding apostrophe as well as an over dot. That's right, so when you have a dot over it and an apostrophe before it, then that means that it's syllabic and lengthened. So long vowels are marked by diuresis. If a letter would receive both an acute and a dot, or diuresis, then a double acute is used instead. There is an M dash, which is written into the romanization, but that's not actually a punctuation mark, it's a word. We'll get into what it means in one of the next slides. So a single quotation mark, or anything that vaguely resembles one, <laughs> including the apostrophe, is used to separate reduplicated syllables from the stem and other affixes. There's more. The dagger symbol is used to separate infixed <laughs> forms from the rest of the word. If a dagger would collide with a reduplication marker, then a double dagger is used instead. Mm -hmm. Since spaces are... how do I put it? Spaces are nice, but in a language where there's this much just content, spaces don't really do the job of separating words, so we have the asterism to do it instead. A double colon, which is later turned into an IPA length mark, with another IPA length mark rotated 90 degrees and placed on top of it to look like a like almost kind of a cursed plus symbol is used to mark the end of a sentence. Question marks are written either as the upside down question mark or just the, the end of sentence marker. And same with the exclamation points, they are either the upside down exclamation point or the end of sentence marker. Now, interrobang is used for situations beyond human comprehension. Yeah, and then the last feature that makes things just 
extra, extra utilitarian is Bostrophedon. That's right. The first line can be written either left to right or right to left, depending on what looks best. And there's no default writing direction. As you can see, the first line is written left to right. And then the second line is written right to left. You know, just, just, just to make better ease of your reading experience. Grammar. It was originally going to be an analytic language, but upon further development, it got so convoluted that we cannot say that it is anymore. Its word order changes based on the sentiment of the sentence, aka its OSV for default indicative statements, SVO for questions, VSO for commands, OVS for <laughs> negated statements, SOV for negated questions, VOS for negated commands. That's right, we use all of the combinations for <laughs> i can't even keep a straight face for this. do you remember the uh, hit cartoon network show flapjack there's a scene where captain knuckles says <laughs> this <laughs> so when captain knuckles says <laughs> yeah. Or in its literal translation, spell your under flap and rich the R dual true is although then that more will be necessary me impress in order to ooh, aka you might have flap and the rich lady under your spell but it's gonna take more than that to impress me <laughs> on to the grammar so how the grammar works if you can call it that. Tenses are, are usually separated into future versus non-future. And in non-future situations, the verb itself, or at least its root, is reduplicated. The verbs are sesquiplicated, which means the first syllable of the word is reduplicated in order to form nouns. And nouns are sesquiplicated in their last syllables to form verbs. <laughs> Reduplicated syllables and words are separated from one another by a punctuation mark in, in, in the form of any kind of apostrophe or apostrophe-like symbol. The M dash, or, you know, the long dash, is pronounced as which adjectivalizes nouns. It is infixed after the first syllable of a word. In the case of reduplication, it also must be reduplicated. Adjectives are verbalized by lengthening the last two vowels. <laughs> Here we have a chain of ever-increasingly difficult word pronunciations. <laughs> Which is the future infinitive, will drink. Then we have the non-future infinitive of drink, or just to drink. Which is... <laughs> and then we have the noun of a drink. <laughs> And then the adjective drunk is and then you have the then you have the verb to be drunk for one to be in the state of being drunk which is <laughs> Woo. 
That is hard to do in one breath. For more grammar, case affixes can be arbitrarily appended to the beginning or end of nouns. The exception to this is that nouns consist of multiple words, in which case the affix is circumfixed. The same also happens if the word is too short. And then, don't worry, don't worry, because pronouns are also often infixed inside of the word. The second person dual or collective, which is a series of, of, a, uh, of a quintuply overlong, which often gets, uh, gets its diuresis turned into one set of uh, one or two sets of quintupleresis. Um, and then along with that we have ah, which is the non-dual second person pronoun, right? And again, those diuresis can often be condensed into, uh, into several layers of rhesus, you know? You know that time when uh, when Jack Sparrow looks over to uh, looks over to his enemies in the hit movie Pirates of the Caribbean, and he says, "I've got a jar of dirt." Well, that was actually just the dub. What he was actually saying was, yeah, so you wonder why they put it into the English dub. Well, that's why. So I hope you have all been absolutely enlightened into the absolute glory and majesty and beauty that is the hyper pirate language. I hope through all of this you have gained an insight into the beautiful, beautiful culture and language of the pirates because not many people knew that, you know, in all reality, this is what pirates truly sounded like. Now, as always, <laughs> I can't do this. <sighs> and as always, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Join my Patreon um, to, to be, become a part of the exclusive Natrin Club. The Autogen book is coming out soon. Join the Discord server. We got Minecraft going on, if you somehow haven't realized yet from all my Minecraft streams. Uh, yeah, yeah. S uh, sorry it's taking me a bit longer to release videos lately because I'm super busy doing my master's degree. And obviously cancerous stuff like this. The next video coming out is going to be one of my most difficult videos ever if this wasn't bad enough. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, if you want to see more of Hyper Pirate, let me know in the comment section below because I'll do it at the expense of my throat. Ugh, here's me taking a cough drop because this absolutely destroyed my throat. All right, <laughs> until next time, not out. Bye bye. <laughs> I can't even do uvular consonants when I'm laughing this hard. God damn it! <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, that, that was a that was a very bad first take. Let me try again. No. No. Please. No. Please. No. No. I... <laughs> Stop. Oh, yeah. You're making me not focus. That's the point.